Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There is a great fight coming up in just a few hours in Monte Carlo at 171.5 pounds between two guys you need to keep an eye on. Now, this video is not a prediction video. Although I do expect the fight to go over, but rather this re this video is really a video to alert you to two future players at 168 and 175 pounds and to alert you to two style points that make these guys very rare. In other words, these are the kind of guys who you don't want to bet against because their styles are so singular that they can fight experienced, more hyped opponents and make that opponent look bad because quite frankly their styles are hard to duplicate in sparring. Right? They're hard to duplicate in preparing for matches. We're talking about the fight literally in just a few hours between Dennis Grochev and you might remember him for giving Lucien Boutte all he could handle and he's fighting unbeaten Edwin Rodriguez. Right now, let's talk about both of these fighters. I hope you get a chance to look at the fight. I know I'm going to eagerly await the film after this fight takes place so I can see exactly how these guys did it against each other. I'm not sure who wins the fight. Right? Rodriguez is the favorite. But here's what you need to know. You've heard me here online talk about guys who are mid-range hookers, right? Um, old Matthew Macklin. Not so much current Macklin, but old Matthew Macklin. These are guys who like to hook you. Danny Garcia today, right? These are guys who like to stand in front of you and riddle you with hooks, right? They like to hook you. They want to have enough space between them and you so that you're not touching them while they go to work. In other words, they want to be mid-range while they throw their hooks. Well, Dennis Grochev is that rare long-range hooker. He's even further outside. Right? It's, it's a bit odd. It discombobulates guys because he's not there to get hit. In fact, he's hard to hit because he's a step back. Fighters who need to get up close, like Zolt Erde, have problems generating volume against Grochev because Grochev is too far away for most fighters to hit. But yet Grochev somehow generates a lot of volume. Right? He's throwing hooks. In fact, he's power punch heavy. Right? And he's throwing enough punches where against Irde he actually threw on average more than 80 punches around but he's a superior athlete right he leverages that athleticism by moving around the ring more than his opponent so the spacing is such that it throws off a lot of opponents their volume is going to plummet Right? They won't quite know what to do with Grochev. And because Grochev is throwing looping hooks from farther out than they're accustomed to, a lot of these guys don't know how to block the shots. More importantly, there's a powerful optical illusion going on. As you watch the grochev Irde fight, it looks like Grochev is outworking him. And I mean substantially. Right? But yet, when you look at the CompuBox numbers, you're going to see that while Grochev landed 147 punches in the fight, Erde only landed 146 punches. In other words, the punches practically were the same. Erde was much more accurate than Grochev. Right? Erde only throws 487 punches to Grochev's 828, but yet Irde 
only lands one fewer punch. But understand, the optical illusion is so powerful that it's the kind of thing that would sway the judges, right? Grochev wins the decision. It's the kind of thing that would sway the fans because you see Grochev's athleticism in the ring, right? So he's very dangerous. Now let's talk about Edwin Rodriguez. You've heard me talk about a gift. In fact, it's really a, a cultivated skill that Sergio Martinez has, where Sergio Martinez can hide his upper body. By that I mean opponents come up to him, they're ready to riddle him with, you know, shots up top, hit him in the head, hit him in the body, and Martinez bends so well at the waist that often his upper body is parallel with his waist, right? You can't find him to hurt him. And it's a bit glaring because, of course, Martinez is actually a power puncher. So while you're looking for him, Martinez, from a bent position, can spring up like a cat and hit you with a knockdown punch. Right? That's why Martinez, as I like to say, if you look at his record, you'll see a string of guys who previously were not knocked out who have been knocked out. Right? You'll even see fights where Martinez's you know, um, springing ability is so unexpected that referees miss knockdowns in the fight. Right? Well, Edwin Rodriguez can hide his upper body. It's actually a bit stunning because he doesn't look as obviously athletic as Dennis Grochev in the ring. But yet when guys get close to him, this guy is slick. He literally starts bending at the waist. You can't find him. Right? He has spectacular balance. And again, it's, it's fascinating. Because he looks like a guy who's just, you know, trolling around the ring. But this balance comes out at key moments in the fight. Where suddenly the other guy comes forward throwing shots... And then you notice that Rodriguez has an unexpected gear. He can literally just bob at his waist. You can't hit him. Let me also point out too that he also can operate from the outside with volume. Right? He, you know, is outside. He's not as much of a long-range hooker as Dennis Grochev. But what he is is a guy who is outside. He doesn't need to tussle or wrestle with you inside. And he himself is getting off a lot of shots, right? Against Moderna, he got off roughly 60 punches around, right? Now, like Abner Maris, Rodriguez does get frustrated. He could have easily been disqualified in the Moderna fight for a flagrant low blow in the eighth round. And it was a bit shocking that he threw it. I mean, it's obviously low. Just like Maris's punches against Joseph Agbeko in their first fight. And it's shocking because understand Rodriguez has an unbeaten record. So why would an unbeaten fighter risk losing that unbeaten status by throwing a low blow in a fight even if the guy he's fighting isn't the best competitor? Right? And so... My point to you is simply this. Take a look at this fight. We know a lot's happening at 168 to 175. Some of the biggest names in boxing reside there, right? Bernard Hopkins, Andre Ward, Carl Froch, um, Chad Dawson, Lucien Boutte, Jean Pascal, James DeGale, George Groves, right? A lot's going on. Nathan Cleverly. A lot's going on at 168. To 175. My point to you is right beneath the surface. You have a couple of talented guys here who are putting it all on the line in a few hours in Monte Carlo. I hope you give it a look. Thanks for watching.